Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and in this video we went to a pet store in the Cleveland area called Something's Fishy. It's a really cool pet store, had a lot of really interesting cichlids. I think you're going to like it, so stay tuned. So this is Something Fishy. It is located just outside of Cleveland, Ohio. Really cool place. It's not often where you get to walk into a store. And it was very clear from the moment we walked in, their love, their passion, and what they really love are cichlids of all different kinds. They had African cichlids, South American, Central American, West African. Just so many cool fish to see. And I hope you're going to enjoy it as we go through this store tour. This was the one side where they kind of had like this little seating area which I thought was really cool so they had some couches they had some nice display tanks as we're going to see here now with a lot of really interesting fish and I think it's something that pet stores could probably do a better job and and mimic this because I, I really think they have this part of it kind of dialed in where you know sometimes what people want to do is yeah they want to shop for fish but it's always more relaxing when you have a place to sit down maybe a place where you can talk about fish with other people and this was one of these these stores where that was something that could happen so they had that section and then pretty soon here we're going to take you into the section where they're actually selling a lot of the fish what we're looking at here are a number of the display tanks like i said with a lot of really interesting and cool things to see uh, these were some of them were larger display tanks and so some of them had cichlids like you're seeing here with this geophagus tapajos they had some severums as you can see in the background there a lot of really interesting silver dollars, uh, which I really liked quite a bit. Uh, they had some planted tanks in here, as I'm going to show you in a moment, and then some, you know, really large display tank with some really awesome types of large predatory type cichlids. Here's one of the planted tanks. I really like the feel of this tank. You got a lot of Anubias going on in here with some Tetras. There was a puffer fish in here as well. Just something really cool to see. I think the other thing that you're hopefully going to appreciate is it wasn't just the storefront that was cool, but they do a lot of breeding. And so we're going to take you behind the scenes downstairs in the basement area where they've got a lot of their really nice fish here. Really, really good looking peacocks throughout the, the, the fish store. And again, this is, they didn't just sell cichlids. And so this is what I chose to mostly show are the really cool cichlids because I thought that was something that people would be most interested in. But they had lots of other community type fish as well. But cichlids is definitely their specialty. And you're going to see when you look at their breeding lines that these are some really nice looking fish of all different kinds. So yes, they had the peacocks, but look, they also had rows of Lake Tanganyikan fish. And those are probably some of my favorite Africans. Here's the rusty cichlids. We have these in our fish room that I really like, and they're not super common around us. So when I saw them, I thought that was pretty cool. They had a whole tank of them. The redfin uh, Borrelii were another really cool one. And again, you get into these really odd, you know, Lake Tanganyikan type fish that are pretty unusual. It was really cool to see them here. Just so many. And again, I'm not showing you the vast majority of the tanks. I just kind of picked some of the highlights. If you are at all in the Cleveland area or you ever pass through there, this would be a place you definitely want to check out. Here's some caudal punctatus. I recently did a uh, species profile. Put that in the upper right hand corner. Ours are the red fin variety. These look more like the yellow fins. But either way, these are magnificent, awesome looking fish. Uh, here are some really nice tetras. And so here, Again, with these, you know, the larger Congo Tetras, that's a, a fun fish to have, especially in some of the African tanks that are not super overly aggressive. A uh, lot of cool looking angels. And so they had multiple angel tanks. I'm just showing you a couple of them. And here were some platinums. I like these. Uh, we have a platinum now in our 125 that I think is really cool. And of course they had some discus here. You could see nice size. I would say they were probably in that, you know, three to four inch range, but nice color. This was one of the display tanks that they had, which showcased some African cichlids. And as I began to look at this tank in particular, it really made me want to have some of the larger predatory haps in you know, the African cichlids. Just so cool. They need a larger tank, but when you look at their features, when you look at their, you know, the way they're, the, the streamlining of their bodies, just a super interesting type of fish. And they had some more. I'm going to show you some more downstairs, but check out the colors of these fish. They're just absolutely amazing. And they're in here with some Imbuna. We've got some relatively chilled out Pseudotrophius ACI. That's the ones with the yellow tails in the back. I think I saw some yellow labs in here as well. And like I said, this is a large tank, so it tends to be uh, working out, at least from what I could see, it was working out just fine. But so many awesome and cool fish, a lot of color, and some fish that I haven't seen before, which was pretty awesome.
The other thing I thought was pretty interesting, as you can see here, there are actually some tinfoil barbs in here, and I, I did a species profile on tinfoil barbs as well. I'll put that in the description. But I've talked about with tinfoil barbs, sometimes they can go with some African cichlids as long as they're not super aggressive. And in fact, we have some African cichlids in with our tinfoil barbs, and it's worked out for many, many years uh, without any issues. It's not something you can do with all types of African cichlids or cichlids in general, but every once in a while you'll find a combination that gets along pretty well, and it looks like that was happening here. So this is actually in their basement where they have a lot of breeding projects going on, a lot of extra tanks. I don't remember the name of this cichlid. I remember somebody saying it was one of the largest cichlids that there is, and it kind of reminded me almost like a bass. I mean, it was very, very large, probably, if I had to guess, maybe 20 inches or so, and it was in here with some catfish. And this was a pretty darn big tank, and you know, you could just, now we're, we're in these, these tanks where we've got all these different breeding groups going on. And this was a lot of fun. You can see that there's some people in the background. We were actually here as part of the Ohio Cichlid Association. They did a shop hop. They organized one as part of the OCA extravaganza. I had never been to one before. It was an absolutely awesome time. Highly recommend if you get a chance to go and you like cichlids, that would definitely be a place to, to check out next year. So it was a really fun opportunity to be here with everybody just checking out all these awesome fish. Here you can see a tank where it's We've got a mix of lakes. We've got some peacocks and we have some Lake Tanganyikan fish. And this can sometimes work uh, as long as the fish aren't overly aggressive. And here we can see some of the males that they have. Uh, I'm assuming these are all breeding males. And one interesting thing, you look at all these fish and all these awesome colors and there are there's a lot of money tied up in these fish. And look what's running this, this fish room sponge filters you know we've done videos on sponge filters before and how versatile they can be and how useful they can be and from time to time we'll get comments about how you know people shouldn't use sponge filters on fish that they really care about and yet here we've got an entire room that's really set aside to breed some outstanding fish and it's all sponge filters a couple of the tanks had hang on the backs but the sponge filters are more than sufficient to uh, accomplish the the biological filtration that one would need. This is a really pretty fish here, as is this one. So I just thought that was interesting that you know the vast majority of these tanks are in fact run on sponge filters. Check out this. This is a really cool, what looks to be a Lake Victorian, and here we go. Here are some more of those predatory halves. And I'm sorry, I didn't put the names in a lot of these just because if they were on the windows, on the glass, I tried to show them, you know, especially when we were upstairs, but the, the people here who own the place were very busy. There were a lot of people from the OCA as part of the shop hop. So I went around, I did my filming, but you're not seeing the names on a lot of these tanks just because one, I don't know a lot of these fish. I just think it's something cool to see. If you want more information, and obviously if you live in the Cleveland area, you could certainly visit this store and get more. But you know, for a lot of these fish, I just I went through, I filmed, I didn't take the time to try to figure out every single name because to do that would have required me to walk around with the people who worked there and they were extremely busy kind of hosting everybody else that was there. This is a cool stingray. This is actually a second part of something's fishy so they got the main area where they have you know the, the main storefront and there's another area besides the basement where they have even more fish and most of these were of the south and central american variety you can see here a, a rather large silver arowana uh, here we've got some more peacocks and they have another basement on the other side it's a pretty big operation and I think they're running it very, very well here. They've got some nice frontosa. They had a few tanks with frontosa. And again, I've got one and a 150 right now. I would love to set up a larger tank uh, for a group of them, but they really do need a pretty big tank if you're gonna do it right. Kind of like what you see here. This tank was probably in the neighborhood of at least a couple hundred gallons, at least that's what I think. And they were absolutely wonderful looking fish you can, as you can see they need a larger tank but they're just so relaxed they don't tend to you know completely terrorize one another like some other cichlids would do and i don't find them to be overly aggressive they tend to just you know i think these are a fish that could easily get bullied by other types of african cichlids and so you have to be careful when you keep the frontosa and here's another tank where they're mixing you know, some of the peacocks along with some of the imbuna, and those imbuna are a little bit less aggressive. And this was probably 
This might have been my favorite fish in all of the, you know, of the entire store. This was actually a fish that was in the basement, so it's not something that you would normally see. But look at this, uh, just magnificent. And again, I'm watching these. I'm thinking, man, you know, I really should start thinking about doing a, a, a predatory African cichlid tank. You know, get something a larger tank set up for something like this. But just absolutely amazing. So this was something fishy it's a great place if you can get a chance to check it out lots of different types of cichlids healthy looking fish big time variety I want to thank once again the oca ohio cichlid association for having us out and allowing us to tag along with their shop hop thank you so much to something's fishy for allowing us to come in and film and if you enjoyed this video share subscribe and we'll see you in the next one